Okay, good afternoon everyone and welcome to this employment committee meeting. I'm Councillor Simon Bosher and I am the Vice Chair of this committee. And before we start, I'd like to draw your attention to the following. Housekeeping. If the continuous fire alarm sounds, please evacuate the room in the public gallery by the stairwells. Do not attempt to use the lifts. Please assemble by Queen Victoria statue in the Guildhall Square. In order to comply with the Guildhall Trust Fire Marshal regulations, if you've signed into the Guildhall, please remember to sign out when you leave the building after today's meeting. May I draw everyone's attention to the fact that this meeting will be live streamed and that the camera zooms in to show the speaker. This is linked to the microphones, therefore can I please remind all attendees to turn their microphones on to speak and then off again once you have finished speaking. Members of the public are permitted to record the meeting on the understanding that it neither disrupts the meeting nor records those stating explicitly that they do not wish to be recorded. Please be advised that the public seating area is not in view of the camera used to webcast this meeting. We don't appear to have too many members of the public here. Okay, item one, apologies for absence. Uh, I've received apologies from Councillor Cal Corkery. And declarations of interest item two. Do any members have any interest to declare in respect of the items being considered before this meeting? Councillor Vernon Jackson. Can I go back one item? Cal's name isn't on the membership of the committee on the front here. Why? Now look at democratic services on that one. Um, he lost his uh, seat on the committee when um, he lost his um, membership of the group, Labour group. Councillor Shah is here as a standing deputy, although not um, for the chair of the committee. Okay, so if Cal's not a member of the committee, we can't have apologies from him. Well, anyway, okay. Fine. Okay. Thanks. Apologies if I'm perhaps um, <laughs> causing a fuss over nothing. But um, if he's not a member of the committee, he can't have a standing deputy either, can he? Um, I, I, he's, uh, Councillor Shah is not a standing deputy um, for the chair of the committee, but he is a, a, a representative of the Labour group on the... Uh, I, think, I think until proportionality is dealt with, it's effectively still a Labour Party seat on this particular committee. And although Councillor Corkery is no longer a member of the Labour Party, Councillor Shah is, in my opinion, quite reasonably allowed to be here at this meeting taking that Labour seat. I don't think we're going to have too much of a political punch-up with the items on the agenda, if I'm honest. Okay, but... Before we go any further, I think it's probably appropriate that we just go around the room for the, those that uh, we, we don't know and if they could just introduce themselves. As I said, I'm Councillor Simon Bosher, I'm the Vice Chair of this committee, and if I look to my left and work my way around that way. Karen Martin, Democratic Services. Councillor Shah, uh, Standing Deputy for Labour in the committee. Natasha Edmonds, Director of Corporate Services. Rochelle Williams, Assistant Director of Human Resources. Sue Page, Finance. Darren Sanders, one of the Liberal Democrat members of the committee. Gerald Van Jackson, one of the councillors. Councillor Matt Atkins, one of the members of the committee. And Dave Ashmore, one of the councillors. David Williams, Chief Executive. Not for much longer. <laughs> I, 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 I was wondering whether the Chief Executive had to declare an interest as we're discussing the Chief Executive at this meeting, but hey-ho. Um, sure I think you're, you're discussing the vacant post of the Chief Executive. <laughs> oh, he's gone already. Okay, we move on to uh, item three, minutes of the meeting held on the 17th of November 2022. I will take people through them page by page. Please shout. Um, I'm looking at uh, big number page six or little number two. 
No. And page three. No. Or page four. Everybody happy with the minutes? Thank you. I will sign those off as a correct record. Moving on, we now are on item four. So is he looking through his page? And this is the appointment subcommittee and recruitment arrangements um, to consider, obviously, the chief executive's role and also the interim director of planning and regeneration. Gerald. But just before we, before we go into the detail of it, I just think it would be right and proper for this committee. This is the first time we've met, or a committee has met since David has put in his resignation, and probably Tristan as well, to officially record our thanks to both of them uh, for the work that they've done um, over a number of years. David, for a huge number of years. Um, and I just think it is right and proper that we say thank you and do it officially. More than happy. Happy with that. Thank you. Um, Natasha, I'm looking in your direction now. Perhaps you could introduce the report. Thank you, Chair. Um, the report sets out the arrangements for the uh, recruitment to the post of Chief Executive and Head of Paid Service. Um, these statutory roles are reserved for Council appointments. Council delegates that uh, process to the Employment Committee, and the Employment Committee are therefore, through this report, tasked with appointing a subcommittee to make that appointment and subsequent recommendations to full Council. Um, it also deals with the, uh, the imminent uh, departure of our current Director of Regeneration and recommends the appointment of an interim, and that appointment be delegated to um, the Chief Executive pending uh, the recruitment of a permanent chief executive, uh, after which we will then proceed to permanent recruitment and a, and a further report would come to this committee about the arrangements for that recruitment. So it's asking for the, uh, to summarise, a, 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 a creation of an appointment subcommittee for the chief executive recruitment and delegation to the chief exec to recruit an interim director of regeneration. Thank you. Thank you very much, Natasha. Uh, questions, members? Gerald. Well, um, actually, I've got three suggested amendments, I'm sorry to say, um, uh, to the report or to the recommendations. Um, I think it's absolutely sensible that all group leaders are involved in this um, appointment for the new chief executive, and I think that's absolutely right and proper. I, the bit I worry about is saying that any other members have to come from the membership of this committee. Um, I, for instance, the deputy leader of the council is not a member of this committee, and, and if this was happening now, I would want Susie as deputy leader of the council to be on that interviewing panel, but she wouldn't be able to with this wording. Um, so I, I would change the words, and in, um, instead of such members of the employment committee, it's such members of the council as are required to ensure political responsibility. Uh, rep um, political um, proportionality so it gives each group flexibility of who they put on the interview panel would be, would be my first suggestion the ses my second suggestion um, is around the timing um, for the report coming back um, to us about a structure for the re for the regen bit it says summer 2023 for a report to come back Summer is a very flexible and long thing, which can stretch into October. Um, I think if we got an interim coming in in April, they will, they'll have recommendations to us pretty quick about what works. And I prefer to see something that says coming back in late May, early June, so that we've got something quicker in terms of being able to look at um, and it just might mean we spend less money on a, an interim. And the third thing, going back to the Chief Executive, is David is Chief Executive of Portsmouth, which is our responsibility, but he's also Chief Executive of, of Gosport. Now, Gosport can't be, people from Gosport can't be decision makers in who are, who is the Chief Executive of Portsmouth, but if, and, and it's their decision whether they want to carry on with the arrangement they currently have with Portsmouth. 
but I wondered if it would be sensible to look for a representative and presumably probably council leader in Gosport to be invited into both shortlisting and the interview panel but not as a decision maker because that has to be our decision but but so that they know and meet the candidates and that so they're more so they're more likely then to know if they want the that candidate to then do the gospel job as well i just think it it would build in the ability for that relationship to carry on in the future Thanks, Gerald. Um, <clears throat> should we deal with those one by one? Um, I, I am of a similar mind when it comes to such members of the Employment Committee. Personally, I think it should be council-wide. Um, I don't know how many members are actually on this interview panel. I think it's usually about six or seven from, from memory. Um, but I think leader of the council, group leaders and opposition uh, of the opposition groups, leaders, uh, and such members of, as Gerald has suggested, the council, including, uh, we don't need the including standing deputies as required to ensure proportional representation um, as nominated by respective group leaders. But just deal with that one in isolation first. I'm quite happy to second that because I think there's a big pool of talent there that we could pull in from. So perhaps we could just take that one in isolation, members, to start with. Everybody in favour of that? We do it from the council. I'm looking and Matt's nodding. So, right, OK. So we've got unanimous on that bit. And so I think also we'd need... There might be group leaders who just can't make it, and therefore if there's a group leader can't, then they need to be able to put somebody else on as well to have that flexibility. Um, yes. Simon, sorry, I, I had my hand up, so sorry. Um, I'm okay with the principle of this, and I think we do need to get the poll. Having gone through this process in my previous council, um, I know how difficult this is. So I think the first thing is to make sure anybody who does it um, knows about interviews and has experience of that, because we can't just have Uncle Tom Cobbley coming along. Secondly, I, I may have misread it, but when are we looking to actually start the the interview process? When is the interviews actually going to happen, Natasha and Rochelle? There's a reason for this. So the um, the intention is to present the appointment subcommittee with a short list of candidates. Um, because of the length of time that recruitment typically takes, we are looking at that taking place immediately post the elections okay. following the AGM. Because we've, I mean, bless us, we've got three colleagues who are in the same place for the same reason, who are not yet a group. Um, and I think it would be unfair, me personally, not to have one of those three involved in that process and we can work out the, which is why I was asking when, because that may or may not change. Um, so basically involve other people uh, and incl ideally include one of that section of people if we can and they're used to it because um, I think that's the fairest way forwards but broadly happy with, with that. Simon. I, I generally agree with you Darren. I mean Natasha and I obviously had a conversation before this and my idea and, and Natasha's idea of the time scale was that it will be post-election apart from anything else. I mean do we really want Councillor Vernon Jackson involved in a new chief executive when he's probably going to lose his seat in May? Do you know, that there are those sorts of questions that need to be considered, shall we say. I, I say with my tongue firmly in my cheek, but if we're doing it post the election, there will be a new influx of councillors that will all be potentially buying into the process of a new chief executive. And I think that is the right time to actually do it. So, uh, and plus, I don't think between now and the end of March, we've actually got enough time to actually do it anyway, if, if I'm brutally honest. So quite happy with, if you're happy with that, with the time scale. I think that's always the intention. And I don't really think it needs to be included in the, um, in the recommendations as such, unless you really want it in the recommendations. The process starts post the 2023 elections. I don't think it really needs to be uh, in there. But yeah, certainly if we widen it out to, we've got group leaders, we widen it out to all members of the City Council with their group leaders nomination. I think that probably covers it all, to be quite honest. 
because there's usually a degree of flexibility in these things anyway. And I, I don't think anybody is going to die in a ditch if, for example, I can't make it and my deputy chooses to take it on in my place. I think we will we'll be flexible with that, provided each group is comfortable with the re with the, uh, the representation that there is there selecting the new chief executive. Um, moving on, um, uh, you have to remind me what the next two were, Gerald, because we'll be waffling around. So the, the other one in, in terms of timing was on page three in the second bullet point um, request for a report to the committee in Primary Committee in summer 2023, setting out proposals for a future structure, taking into account the report table to the Committee in August 22. Uh, I, instead of summer 23, I'd put late May, early June, just so that we've got something to concentrate our minds and get on with it. I, I would agree. I think that probably um, replaced summer 2023 with end of a particular month. Are, are we comfortable that it's June, members? Down. It's all up to whether HR has got the capacity to do it. Personally, I'd do it. But what I don't want to do is give dates and the dates go back because that creates complete uncertainty for any everyone. I've got Natasha. I'm so pleased. The reason I said summer uh, 2023 is because dates for the um, new municipal year have not been set, but typically there is an employment committee in July every year, which is usually the first, first employment committee after the AGM. So that would seem a sensible timing to, to add in, in line with your regular schedule of meetings. Could we, could we stick July in brackets there somewhere, maybe? Gerald. I'm, I'm sorry, we do not need to be beholden to a, a, a set of dates. Um, we need to make the committees and the work is a work for what we want it to do, not to be straitjacketed by something that appears in a diary. Um, to lose a month because something just happens to be penciled in that there, normally there is a meeting because somebody who's chosen on the 16th of May can't possibly chair a meeting until July seems antediluvian. Matt, I think you were indicating. I was just going to say, I mean, we can obviously put an employment committee in July. July is normally a quieter month when things are settling and being fixed because there isn't a council meeting that month, is there? But maybe that's a good time to have it. I was just thinking that, um, that, that it's not usually a month where we have uh, regular meetings, is it? Darren. Sorry, Matt, it's the other way around. June is when we don't normally have a council meeting. It's July when we normally have a full, full council meeting. No, that's fine. I mean, for me, it's purely... We can set, we can set a meeting any time we want, um, but, we, but I think it's very useful to have as a backstop that July meeting so there is an end point, but to try and, and, work, and work as quickly as we can. And if that requires a special meeting to go through this, it requires a special meeting to go through this, but no later than July would be very helpful. I get both sides of the argument. We haven't set the dates, but it doesn't stop us, as you said, holding a, a special employment committee meeting. After all, that's what we're doing here. We can do that. I think setting a, a backstop of July would probably be the best place to be, and whoever's on the employment committee next year obviously will be looking to make this sooner rather than later, I would suggest. But I wouldn't want to put human resources under any unnecessary pressure because by the same token we need to get the right person to do the job and not necessarily the quickest we can find just because we want to get rid of David. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> never mind. Um, okay, are we, are we happy with um, changing that bullet point then to July 2023 latest? Could we have June stroke July? Let's have June stroke July just to keep the leader of the council happy. But I think we all know where we're, we're going from, going with on this one. <laughs> I, think, I, think, I think the officers understand that we, we would rather not sit on this longer than is absolutely necessary and get the process moving forward. The other one that you brought up was the subject of Gosport. Um, I, 
I th as, I, as I recollect, and I think you can probably all blame me because I'm sure I sat on David's appointment panel and I certainly sat on Tristan's appointment panel, so you can blame me for both. Um, they, the candidates were taken around Portsmouth uh, quite extensively in the days prior to the interviews. And I'm looking at Natasha. Would that include engaging with Gosport in the case of a chief executive? So we um, uh, benefit from some really excellent partnership uh, relationships and working in Portsmouth. So we will be ensuring that all of the candidates have the opportunity to meet with all the various partners and stakeholders that we work with, which will include partners in health, in, in other local authorities, including Gosport. So they will uh, be part of the process, which is important, as important for the partners as it is for the candidates. Darren. Um, one on this and then one on another point. Um, I don't know whether David's job is basically going to be and chief executive of Gosport as well, or whether that's something we wait for Gosport to work out yeah. and what to do. If it is, that's fine. Um, the second bit is around the director of regeneration and the appointment of the interim. Um, I'm a bit uneasy about it just being an officer agreement without some form of democratic oversight. Now that can go through the group leaders, relevant representatives of this committee, something like that, not holding it up. But I think in normal circumstances there would be an appointment panel, there would be democratic oversight here. And I'm a little bit uneasy about appointing an interim without having some form of democratic oversight. So I believe the intention is to, to engage group leaders, but David, I don't know if you wanted to expand on that. Yeah, I think technically it's, yeah, uh, my, my approach to it would be to engage with the group leaders, certainly. Um, so where the actual decision, technically the decision lies probably with the chief executive, but that would only be after consultation, appropriate consultation with the group leaders, um, because this person is going to be, you know, working with you as the politicians. Um, so I think that's, that's absolutely fine. If I can just m pick up on the Gosport point as well. I think, I think it's important that we always remember that the two councils are sovereign individually. Um, and I, but, but we also need to be as clear as we possibly can be with potential candidates. Um, and I think it would be sensible to involve Gosport, a Gosport representative in the early deliberations and sight of the candidates and certainly involve it in, in, the, you know, in, the, in that process, but as Gerald said, not in the decision making. Both councils have to make their individual decisions, but also you can't assume that your chosen candidate for Portsmouth would necessarily be leaping at the chance to become the chief executive for Gosport. So, you know, we've got, we've got a section 113 agreement between the two councils, um, but it, we've just got to manage this quite sensitively and quite carefully. I think it's important that, that in seeking the appointment, Portsmouth conveys to the candidates from the earliest stage, so this will be important for the headhunters to understand this as well, that the council has an interest in perpetuating the relationship between the two councils. That may or may not include a singular or the same person being the chief executive of both councils. It, the, the, the system could operate on a slightly asymmetrical basis quite, quite effectively, I think. So, so I think we need to keep the options open. We need to make sure that the candidates understand that that relationship exists and it's something that we'd want to nurture. But we can't have the obligation on that candidate that they then pick up the reins for Gosport, A, because Gosport might not choose that, and B, because they might not choose it. And that's what I'm trying to, sorry, Simon, that's what I'm trying to get at, David, is that it might be that our friends over the other side of the harbour may go, no, 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 we're going to go our own way. 
um, and this is about appointing our chief executive, and it may require a quick chat early on, um, just to check and see, do you want this to continue, or do you want to review this, or anything like that? Something like that, because what I didn't want is us to impose our will on, as you say, a sovereign authority that we've chosen to have a relationship with. Yeah, and if I may... Sorry, Simon. If I may, Chairman. I, I, you know, and I think that a period of reflection might not be a bad thing. You know, so Portsmouth go through with the process of appointing their preferred candidate. Gosport could make interim arrangements for a while and see whether or not they like the cut of the jib of your choice and then enter into a conversation with yourselves and with, the can and with the successful Portsmouth Chief Executive to see if an arrangement could be agreed whereby that person would take on both roles. Yeah, they might say no. But you know, I think we've just got to be, got to be ready for that. I think then the, the words I would suggest would be something like the Gosport Council is invited to be part of the recruitment process in an informal and non-decision making manner. And I'll second that. No more questions? <laughs> Okay, well, let, let's put that one uh, to the committee then. Uh, I think Natasha's just scribbled down Gerald's words. Are we comfortable? I think Gosport need to be included in, in the loop anyway, and then they can make their own decision. I, I mean, that's the proposal. I'm quite happy to support that uh, informal process. Uh, members? Uh, Dave's nodding. Matt's indicating. Ashgar, yeah, okay. So we'll, in, we'll include that in the wording just to make sure that we've got uh, Gosport sort of covered as part of the process, I think, is probably what we're looking at. Okay, and the, the third one, which is something that I'm, I'm interested in as well, is the interim um, appointment for Tristan Samuel's replacement. Um, and I agree with, again, with what Gerald has said about we, we don't want to be potentially spending money for a long period of time. But I'm also minded that well, there's a couple of committee meetings ago, we were exploring the possibility of splitting that role into one for regen and one for traffic and transportation. And I think there was um, an element attached to, because Tristan was still with us then, is what would the impact be from a contractual point of view on Tristan? It now strikes me that this is also an opportunity to see whether that principle of splitting it works from a structure point of view and look at the cost effectiveness into, into splitting one into two. Uh, again, I'm not, I'm not going to die in a ditch as to whether we go one direction or another because I think we've had both advantages and disadvantages with regards to putting the two roles into one and I think the peer review and traffic and transportation has, has sort of like teased a lot of that out. So I would like to see something that says that we actually explore that particular opportunity and that the employment committee will make a decision as to whether we think we do want to go down that route or whether we want to stay with the scenario as is. Now, I appreciate that might be putting a bit of pressure on the employment committee because that would require a quick decision. But I suspect that probably if we went down that report previously, then probably quite a lot of that work has probably already been done to a certain degree. So we could probably get in another employment committee quite quickly to say this is where we want to go or that's where we want to go because it will certainly shape what HR needs to do going into next uh, next municipal year as to whether we're looking for two people or just one person. I've got Gerald and then I've got Darren. Uh, I think that's an entirely sensible piece of work to be done. I think I'm kind of looking for the interim to provide effectively a piece of external consultancy to give us some of that advice. So I was going to wait until they come in in April to be here for a, a, a month or so because they, they should then be able to give us 
a steer of what their thinking might be. And our thinking might be different, but if you're going to have somebody around as an external, effectively an expert coming in, um, I, want to, I want to get my money's worth out of them, um, and I want to drag everything out of the little grey cells that are there. So I, my, I, my sort of thinking of timescales was I was hoping we'd get the interim in before Tristan goes so that there could be a handover of stuff between Tristan and, and the interim. And, and then I'd want... Most people come to these conclusions pretty quick about what things should be. To have something from them quite quickly, it might be... It's, 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 it's in early May, just after the election, um, that something comes back. But, but, but I think I would wait for their advice. We might choose not to take it, um, and there are lots of different ways of, of, of cutting things. And the report that we had in August 22, people will have changed and developed and moved into roles since then, and, uh, and that they might, things might be a bit different from then. I, I, just, I think I just, if we're going to have these, this interim in, I would try to want to get as much out of them as is humanly possible in terms of their advice. So I would wait for them to, to be in for a few weeks. I support what Gerald says, because um, I think it's just great. But the other aspect is, I'd, I mean, I initially wanted to see an, a, a director of transport because I thought that was the answer to the question. The evidence, particularly peer review, changed my mind. I think what we can do, Simon, is perhaps expand your principle a bit more and actually give the new person and, and HR the chance to go, actually, what does this directorate look like? How is this structured in terms of the long-term development of regeneration in the city? So it's not just transport. I think there's a real chance to have a look across the piece and go, actually, what, what do we want out of this job? Is this job too big for one person? And if it is big, how else do we arrange the structure? Uh, and also to go, what should this person actually be doing in terms of driving the city forwards over the next 10 to 20 years? So I, I, I take your point about it being transport, but I think it's a bit wider than that. So I accept your principle, we're, but we want to expand it a bit. Yeah, I think that's very sensible. I, th I think in terms of the selection of the interim director, somebody with the qualities to help us with that piece of work will be one of the considerations in terms of finding the appropriate person. I guess the only word of caution would be that if we rush them too much, we'll get their reflections from their last assignment, not from this assignment. Yeah, I have to say, I've, I've some concerns with, with that approach. I appreciate I don't have the experience of others in actually um, running the council. It does sound like, um, I mean, if we're talking about someone who's here for only a few months running what, let's frankly be honest, is one of the most difficult, I think, one of the departments in one of the most difficult positions given where planning is, some of the major projects that they're going through. I mean, by the time they're in and they've worked out you know, all the things that they're meant to have a steer on, unless we're expected to put more responsibility for that on the layer down of management to run the individual projects. How is that person going to have a lot of time to, you know, assess and plan for the future for their replacement? I mean, maybe we get an interim who then turns into the permanent person, but there's by no means a guarantee of that. So, I mean, um, I don't know if I think they sound like necessarily the best placed person to be able to do that. I think you have to think carefully, do we want someone who's going to you know, stabilise the ship while we, and, and keep the projects going while we look for the next person, or is everything going to go on pause while we get someone in who's essentially just assessing the department for, for restructuring? I mean, um, and if that's what we're doing, is it an interim director we want, or is it someone with expertise in kind of restructuring, or even, a, you know, our, our own internal decision about restructuring I, the department? I, I think what we're looking for to start with is a me too, so somebody to take on the role that Tristan Samuels is actually doing. Um, but my, my view is, is that we considered it, I didn't appreciate it was as long ago as August, but we certainly went through that process, 
Um, it strikes me as being an opportunity, whether the interim gets it or not, to do that piece of work again, which will have to come back to employment anyway, to say, let's actually have a look at it. Now, I don't mind whether it's the interim person comes in. I think there are positives and negatives behind that, as, as David said, reflection on a previous job or whatever. But I think it needs to be something that we need to consider as part of this process to appoint Tristan. Now, whether that needs to go down as, <coughs> as a recommendation, because all we're doing is, is delegating authority to appoint an interim director to the, to the chief executive, which is what we're doing, and the fact that David and Natasha have picked up our views that we've expressed here that says, let's do that piece of work, whether we need to put down a recommendation putting that in writing to do that, or we basically say do that and we'll consider it at another employment committee as to whether we want to stick with what we've got or whether we want to split it into two. Does it need a recommendation to do that, or is the conversation here sufficient, Darren? I, the one thing I would add to the recommendation is delegate to chief executive in consultation with the group leaders, because that gives us a, a certain And as part of that process, there will be a chat around you know, firstly, he, is, he or she is, is going to be a shop minder. I'm not expecting anything to go on pause, frankly, because we've got projects that we have to continue and we need to continue. So that's the first step. But also to use this opportunity to use whatever experience is necessary to go, what does, what does this future look like? Is this, is this section too big for one person? If so, what goes where? What other opportunities there are to look at regeneration? And I think that can also be done by the chief executive in consultation with the group leaders early on, and then the, the, the outcome comes back here. Sorry, I, I, my apologies if the report wasn't clear, but the second bullet point is actually recommending exactly what you're just talking about, because it requests a report to the Employment Committee no later than June or July, setting out proposals for a future structure, taking account of the report tabled at the committee in August 22. So, so it is actually saying that the report that comes back will give you some views on, on what a future structure could look like. I wish you'd said that 15 minutes ago, Natasha. <laughs> it's like an awful lot of political hot air then, wouldn't it? Okay, well, if, if, if members are comfortable that that bullet point does cover that, then really we're looking at the third bullet point um, with at the addition of in consultation with the group leaders to be added to that, which I think we've already undertaken. So uh, taking that bullet point there with the addition of in consultation with the group leaders, are people uh, generally happy with that? I'm quite happy to propose that. I'm getting nods all round. Uh, Ashgar, are you happy with that? He's happy with that. So with that change there. So I think we've now got the three changes. Uh, the risk of sitting here for another hour, is there anything else anybody wishes to raise at all in relation to this report? We've got a room full of quiet politicians. How wonderful is that? We could <laughs> talk about the memorial that be erected to, to David Williams uh, and his time. <laughs> Is that at Lakeside, is it? <laughs> okay, members. Well, if there isn't anything else, I will call this particular meeting to a close. It is uh, nine minutes past four. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.